How do creative people keep coming up with great ideas and brilliant solutions again and again and again? I'm no genius, but I've tried to distill what I do into a seven step process. Let's go. Hello friends, Matt Brunton here in the north of England and as creative people we have to come up with ideas and I must confess I never worry about having to come up with the next idea. I never worry about giving ideas away either because firstly it's all in the execution and secondly I never doubt my ability to come up with more great ideas and I think after years of experience you start to develop that confidence in yourself. But What I've done for this video is try to distill my process into seven steps and I think this is influenced by a book I read years back called A Technique for Producing Ideas. I don't actually know, I couldn't find my copy so there's a little picture on the screen but if you've got my copy give it, no you just enjoy it. But that book definitely inspired me at the time. I can't say today how much of this process is directly lifted from this book but what I've done is try to crawl inside my head and reverse engineer the process of what now is second nature to me now. I don't follow the list, but maybe the list will be helpful to you. So here we go. Number one, be endlessly curious. I have that fascination with life. I love to ask people questions about what they do and, and what they're interested in. I can learn something from everybody. I devour books. I love to go to art galleries. I love to travel to new places. And if you're going to be a creative person, you have to have that curiosity about life in general. It's not something you can just apply during your nine to five or during the time when you're working on that problem. If you want to be someone who communicates brilliantly, you have to have that creativity. And so that curiosity has to permeate all of your life. You need to start to find uh, wonder in things. You need to be able to ask questions. And it's important to do that outside our field. If you're a Metal songwriter, don't only listen to metal. If you're an oil painter, don't only look at oil paintings. If you're a graphic designer, don't only look at other designs. You have to get outside of your field, outside of your bubble, and have a curiosity about everything. And all of that is material. All of that is things that we, it, it percolates and it, and it grows and it gestates within us and at the right time that will inform our practice. Number two, research your subject. The depth of your research depends on the scope of your project. If you're writing a PhD thesis you've probably got several years of research ahead of you but if your boss asks you to come up with five ideas in the next half an hour you haven't got as much time for research. But I think it's such an important part of the process to, to read, to try and maybe experience the, the thing that you're involved in. Like if you're doing an advertising campaign for Croatia tourism, then it would be good to go to Croatia. So having some sort of experience of what you're doing is really important. Find out the limitations. If you're doing production design for a stage play, you'll want to know the, the theatre's uh, rigging points and the stage size and the, the sight lines. And th there'll be certain limitations. There'll be budget for every project. So these things are important to find out. They don't necessarily bound your creativity at this point in a negative way, but they need to be in the mix. And actually, creativity develops within boundaries. So boundaries can be a good thing and they can help you start to think uh, within a certain channel rather than just having the tyranny of the blank page and not knowing where to start. So going deep into research and really finding out about something is so important. If it's a product, learn its features, learn its benefits, spend time with it. And through really uh, thinking about uh, the thing, the medium, the space that you're working in, things will start to come together. It's your general curiosity about life, your knowledge about people, and your specific knowledge about the thing, the project, the product that you're working with. It's those things coming together that generates the idea, the communicative idea, the big concept that you're trying to find. Number three, redefine the problem. When you started the project, you had some sort of problem that was given to you. That's Perhaps it was just give a 10 minute speech or it might be an advertising campaign or it, it might be your next uh, great series of artworks. I don't know, but 
now is the time to redefine it. Ask yourself questions. What are you really trying to say? If, you, if you're giving a speech and you've been uh, researching maybe artificial intelligence and you, you've spent time really developing that, you will have started with some curiosity, something that led you down that path. But now start to redefine the problem. Write it out. Try and get it in a sentence. What is the actual problem you're trying to solve? Uh, and then rewrite it, write it from different people's perspective and try and get a clear picture of this is my problem, this is my issue, this is the thing that I'm trying to address and have that clear in your mind. Number four, do the hard thinking. This is the hard work part. This is when you really lean in and you look at all the notes from your research and ideas that are already popping into your head and you write those down and you get them out and you stare at that problem. And it's time maybe to step away from the screen or continuing to do things and really use your noggin and let it be uh, brain aided, not just computer aided. Let it be a chance for you to lean in and focus. Actually, just spend time thinking. You might want to do this on a walk. You, you might want to do this just with a pencil and paper, but spend time thinking about the problem. If you've got stuck on a song that you're producing, don't keep picking up more instruments and just stop. Listen. Use your ears. And what do your ears tell you you need to do next? If you're a graphic designer, don't keep pushing things around the screen if a layout's not working. Stop. Step back from it and ask, why is it not working? And try and go back to a central concept, a core idea. Conceptual ideas are the ones that really stick with us. They're centered around a clear, big idea. And I always look for that. I always want to find that. So I spend time now doing the hard thinking, really thinking about the problem, really spending time just wrestling it with it, just sitting with the, the uncomfortableness of the unresolved uh, problem and thinking through different approaches, getting all my ideas out, even the bad ones, uh, and keep revisiting it and keep replaying it in my mind. Number five, forget all about it. This is when the lightning bolt will hit you. This is when the idea will come. It's when you've done all that hard work, your research and your defining the problem and your thinking, and then you walk away. Maybe literally go for a walk outside or go and exercise or have something to eat or just take yourself away from the problem. Maybe work on a different project. I've often found that if I've got a few projects going on, when I'm working on one, that idea comes to mind for the other. I just have to write that down and put that to one side, but I know it's the breakthrough. And it's usually at that point, if through working through things logically, and if the idea has not come to you through step two, step three, step four, once you walk away from it, it will come back to you in a flash of inspiration. Number six, build on the concept. Now is the time to go broader. Once you have your one central big idea, you can then broaden it and think about what are the applications? Where does it extend? It might work in this one place, but how's it going to work in all these others? How's it going to work over a longer time frame? Now you can bring in collaborators. Big ideas are rarely developed by big teams, but now you can bring in more people to help you extend it and help you broaden it. Number seven, refine the concept. It's all in the edit. You have to make it presentable. It's all in the execution. You have to make it practical. You have to make it work in the real world. Perhaps the budget constraints come back in now to define what actually will get made rather than your grand plan. But your core concept still has to come through. And it's here where careful editing and skill in execution can make sure that the idea lands. And the more you train yourself to Think creatively, which just means going through this process, being endlessly curious, going deep in research, thinking hard about problems, and then thinking what would be a different approach, a different way to communicate that, a clearer way, a better way, a funnier way, or something which would stick with people, a core image. You start to see these connections all the time and you become known as a creative person. But really, you're somebody, yes, with some talent, but you're somebody who does that hard work, who leans into that stuff because for you, it doesn't really feel like hard work. You love being curious. You love being artistic. You love bringing a bit of flair to things and you love solving problems. 
and that's what makes you creative. Hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, let me know down in the comments and also if you have any other tips for being creative, leave them there too. I'd love to see them. Talk to you soon.